Welcome, thank you for waking up so early. I don't know if uh, any of you were at the um, keynote yesterday on NGI, Next Generation Internet, anyone? Yeah? I don't know about you, but uh, I felt kind of revolted to hear what I heard. Um, we're <coughs> in February. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. We're in February, and um, the EU calls are coming uh, at a deadline in April, mid-April. That means we don't have much time to work. And I was quite surprised that um, the presentation yesterday didn't present a consortium, didn't present people working on this. So uh, I will briefly uh, present the consortium we've set up to work on ICT 28. So we're not going for ICT 24, which is uh, what was presented at the keynote yesterday about intermediaries giving money to projects. We're going for uh, money that our consortium will consume. And uh, we're looking towards ICT24 uh, research and innovation action next year, where your project will consume stuff. All right? So this is not exactly true, because uh, part of our consortium is making software, and part of our consortium is making hardware. And all of our consortium is grassroots people. Um, there are four keywords in, in this presentation. Community, technique, training, and a for, for, fourth one, which is related to uh, people and community, but I can remember. Yeah, grassroots, I said it already. That's why. Um, so. Over uh, the last few years, um, we met at different places, uh, people from the uh, Federated Web, uh, people from the peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, people from the mesh networking community, and we were always having this question coming up, how do we fund our development? Um, it took some years, but finally we have something called CCT, uh, the Center for Cultivation of Technology that is based uh, in Germany uh, that is developing a platform to uh, offer um, free software projects a possibility, informal free software projects a possibility to uh, get donations, uh, get funding, and pay their taxes without having to take care of it. I recommend you to uh, have a look. This is um, our uh, coordinator on ICT28, which is about future hyper-connected sociality. Uh, you will hear a bit of uh, European uh, keywords here. I'm sorry. Uh, what we want to do really is this, to create a meeting space to federate existing projects. So. We need to define what is uh, social media. What do we understand by social media? Um, I was uh, very happy that uh, Tristan showed this uh, SecuShare slide about uh, we need to build a GNU internet. It was made by Lynx a few years ago uh, to talk about SecuShare at the CCC. Um, I was also happy to have uh, Ripe Atlas um, a presentation just before because this is about the range of what we need to understand as social media. Something that brings uh, free software and technology to the technical community but also uh, things that people use uh, who are not technical and this is very important. This is uh, uh, something key to our project um, Maybe I should uh, say, uh, if you can s swipe one slide left. Yeah. 
So this is the name of the consortium. Uh, I let you parse the recursive acronym. Uh, we have other acronyms that we will keep uh, secret until April. So the, the, uh, the very idea is to bridge these communities together um, to work with people who don't have uh, any interest in technology. Yeah, people who uh, don't need to know the chemical components of what they eat, but still need to eat. So this, is, this comes from the Tech Sovereignty book, the introduction of the Tech Sovereignty book that you can find uh, at the tour booth. Uh, Ignifugo is here, uh, she can sell, sell some to you. Uh, I recommend to everyone in this room uh, reading this book. It's available in six languages. Uh, yeah, so this, this is what we understand about uh, community-based social media. We want existing projects, existing communities come together, say what they have to say about how we want the next generation internet to be. So this, this has nothing to do with how Europe wants it because Europe wants blockchain, Europe wants a lot of keywords that we don't care about, but we have to go by their rules in order to get their funding to our community, okay? So that, so that it's very clear. Uh, it's a, uh, uh, yeah. Ah, yeah. I'm sorry, I, I was, uh, I, uh, so Natasha is going to play with the slides because uh, she, she knows the slide deck and uh, uh, what's the time? Okay, so what I want to do with this uh, 23 minutes is uh, present the consortium, uh, present a bit of the project, and then the last 10 minutes we talk and you tell me what uh, the, the FOSDEM community in the decentralized room wants to do with this European money in the next three years. It's three years, yeah? Um, it starts now, uh, end of April, we have the, the, um, the stuff done. Um, End of October, we have a response, hopefully positive, from uh, the European uh, Commission. And then everything starts uh, 2019 for three years of funding. At the same time, ICT24, uh, October uh, 2019, no, 2018, we can start applying for new projects uh, that will receive between 50,000 to uh, 300,000 uh, euro each. Uh, this is a lot of work. Um, once we have passed the first um, um, step of uh, having this, uh, this uh, uh, public uh, CSA and RIA uh, folders in, then we have uh, a lot more time to address other projects. So yes, this is a very important slide because um, ICT28 about hyper-connected, future hyper-connected sociality um, is full of keywords. I mentioned blockchain, I didn't mention fake news. So who knows that fake news existed since the Bible? <laughs> nice. Uh, if you're interested in, uh, in uh, validating this information, I recommend um, a book by someone called Rabinovitz about uh, erotic literature at the time the Bible was written, for example. Um, Autonomedia, it's called, I can't remember. I can give the, the, the reference later. So. To fake news, the European Union wants, like a number of Silicon Valley people, uh, to give a definite, definitive response that is algorithmic truth. We want to tackle, no, not we, not me, 
uh, these people want to tackle fake news with uh, blockchain to verify the information. In case you want to know, it doesn't validate with protection of sources. So we came up with another idea, which is how do people prevent fake news nowadays without blockchain? They ask their friends. Yeah? They ask their friends, their friends ask their friends, and their friends ask ex experts, refer to people who actually know things uh, about what is being discussed, and they get together and they make knowledge, and they make this knowledge uh, available to everyone. This is how we've been doing it for ever. So we call it epistemic validation. And it's based on community practice, which means um, we want to go to existing communities, take machines there that will enable them to um, collaborate, uh, discuss, validate knowledge, share this knowledge. Okay? But there's also another very important uh, part to, to this. Once you have machines and you have software, uh, decentralized software, to uh, bring these people together and have them work together, um, you have a couple of problems. First, probably these people already have their habits. So you cannot come to a community and say, hey, look, we have a fantastic technical solution for you. Uh, this is free software. You're going to love it, and you're going to use it. And they're happy. And you go there, and you show stuff, and it works, and they're super happy. And you go away, and they stop using it. So there's this. And there's another, another thing also, which is they already have knowledge. You don't go to them and say, hey, we want to show you something. This is what uh, you know, capitalists do, uh, colonizers, uh, Silicon Valley, etc. They come to you and they say, hey, we have a perfect solution. Look at it. No, we don't have perfect solutions. We have many solutions to many different problems. Social media is, not, is just not how Facebook does it or how Twitter does it. And this is certainly not how we do it. Yeah? I see an anti-fascist action t-shirt. It's a bit different. So we want to bring technology, free hardware technology, for example, with our partner Olimax, whom you know already, uh, bring people who make software, put this software in the boxes, bring people who don't make software, talk to these people who make software, have them understand in a way that they can transmit that knowledge. Already we have a package, and this package we deploy it around Europe. Thousands of boxes, thousands of communities, thousands of different approaches where we can say, okay, because it's a research and innovation action, say, okay, here we deploy ripe Atlas probes. Here we deploy Mastodon. Here we deploy Wine Uno Host. Here we deploy, I don't know, SecuShare. That's the bulk of uh, the idea. I know that you're showing this slide specifically to talk about Baobaxia, which is a very interesting project based on Git. It has no security at all. Uh, from a technical point of view, it's almost terrible to have this, but it serves a very interesting purpose in that it allows people to uh, share knowledge knowledges, we would say, because uh, very different types of knowledge, to preserve their culture, to preserve, um, we're talking here about a, a community, uh, the former slave community in, um, uh, in Brazil that was granted, 
when slavery was abolished in, uh, in Brazil, they were granted a large part of uh, Brazilian territory, ranging from urban spaces to uh, swamps and deserts. And there are 2,000 communities, and there is this Baobaxia network that connects 200 of them. Uh, some of them have uh, what we know as always-on connectivity. You know, you have electricity, internet, and it just works. Some of them have zero electricity. So this has to be uh, delay tolerant in a way that we are not used to think about. So this is that kind of use cases that we also need to take into account when uh, we sit our computers uh, hacking away. We cannot think about all the uh, use cases that come. So for example, uh, I had this discussion yesterday uh, with some people who are really interested in the blockchain and they are uh, convinced that you can use blockchain uh, for social good. Fine, but um, these people in the jungle, they cannot use blockchain. And the blockchain won't solve their problems. If 90% of what's in your fridge comes from your garden, to the blockchain, your fridge is empty. So technical systems have biases. Yeah? Uh, you saw the uh, slides of Lawrence Lessig called his law. Um, we have made this uh, little book yes, uh, yesteryear. Software Freedom Your Way. Um, there are very few paper copies left, but the bulk is here. Code is politics. With freedom comes responsibility. All actions happen in a situation. Don't say bottom up, say topless. And when in doubt, fork. So that's the way we want to make this uh, EU thing, working with communities, not from top down, not from bottom up, but topless, transversally, all together. And that's why uh, I have about 10 minutes left, and I want to engage with you right now about how you feel we should uh, make stuff with this EU funding. Um, just before, I want to tell you that we have a working platform that is a discourse uh, at uh, ps.zoetical.com. I don't know if we have uh, the URL here, but this is where we are going to make the, um, uh, our EU work. And starting in April, most probably, we will start uh, uh, doing public stuff. There are a number of events that will uh, keep on uh, talking about, about this, um, like uh, THSF in May, uh, RMLL in Strasbourg in July, uh, Transhack meeting in the uh, end of August somewhere, maybe in Tarnak. Uh, other uh, events uh, uh, of this community around the year. Um, if we get the funding, probably we do something at CCC. If we don't get the funding, we probably do something at CCC anyway. Um, that's it. The website doesn't work. Which one? That one. Try HTTPS. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, um, we had the hosting um, without HTTPS when I made this slide, so yeah. Now there is HSTS, so we cannot go to HTTP. All right, uh, I didn't talk about the partners. Do you want information about the partners? So I mentioned Olimax, uh, Gandhi, 
is around the uh, French registrar. Uh, we have uh, Open University through a very interesting, nice project uh, called the Cobra Collective. Have a look, cobracollective.org. They're doing lots of very interesting things with remote communities in the Amazonian. Uh, we have a large um, um, volunteer network, uh, Service Civil International, uh, which, which is going to be 100 years old uh, next, uh, or in 2020. Uh, that's four. We have... <coughs> yeah, we have uh, CCT um, to coordinate the action. CCT is very important because uh, it's an intermediary to free software projects. So, for example, I don't know, uh, Robio.io is uh, uh, using CCT uh, as the official um, entity. Um, so we have, uh, I'm a bit lost now. Oh yeah, we wanted Via Campesina. La Via Campesina, do you know about this organization? It's a peasant organization worldwide. Um, um, organization of uh, anti-Monsanto uh, farmers. Uh, but they are too busy right now, so they won't do it. Um, yeah, PEP Foundation, pretty easy privacy. Uh, they are Swiss. So uh, a tip when you make a um, um, new consortium, Switzerland pays for stuff that Europe would f pay for normally, so it's free, uh, free money for your consortium. Uh, maybe NetHood? Uh, we have to talk about this. Um, who else? Uh, that active from University of Amsterdam. Uh, they've been doing a lot of data analysis uh, from activism. Yeah, and we're uh, trying to get uh, uh, EIC network into the consortium, but uh, they're very slow to respond. So if you have press uh, outlet or uh, better um, um, bridge of uh, uh, consortium, it's okay. And probably I'm uh, eating on your time, so I will stop here. Aral? <laughs> um, but I felt the same way towards the European Commission presentation yesterday, uh, especially since it was, you know, they kept saying, and now it's time for us to start working on this. Let's start <laughs> working on it, as if no one's been working on this. So, thank you. Um, regarding the consortium, I'd love to chat to you about whether we can help with Envy. I'd love to. I think you're doing hugely important. Um, in terms of partners, I would also maybe talk to you, suggest might be a very interesting entity to look into for democratizing the domain name CNET networks and system in general. Um, but mostly, uh, I just wanted to say, I think our focus should be on building the everyday things. Because, you know, partly where we failed a lot in CNO before is we built great things for ourselves. Okay. Um, wonderful hobby projects, not to put them down in any way. They work great, they're designed great for us, not for everyone else. And I think part of that problem is that we're not diverse. So I think one of the key things that we could maybe look into is diversity in our own community so that if we make our communities more diverse, the people building these <coughs> things, then we can design for ourselves and still design for a diverse world. Um, so thank you. Thank you. So um, I will repeat for the, for the record. I won't repeat everything, of course. Um, and I'm very bad at repeating uh, things I hear also. <laughs> Um, so Aral um, um, thanked me for uh, a feeling for uh, the last two days that uh, he found his tribe. In, uh, so yeah, I think it's, it's very nice. Uh, he also uh, suggested that uh, we could contact OpenNIC and uh, Indy to talk about a consortium partnership. He also mentioned diversity. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, EC 
uh, yesterday saying that uh, uh, we need to start work on things like if uh, nobody was working on it. And, uh, and diversity uh, 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 in our community. As I complained uh, about the lack of diversity on this, in this room for the, uh, the day, uh, I must say that we didn't try anything about it uh, in our consortium, but it happens that uh, more than half of the people working with us are women. So Natasha is here and Svetlina is here also. And uh, yeah. Um, so maybe I can pass the mic. It will be easier uh, if, uh, if someone wants to talk. Okay. Okay. Hey. Um, so I was in I was in Brazil, the Colunga people, a few months ago in a community with no electricity. Tried to put up a GSM network, um, and I'm a little confused with this. Whether you know, yesterday at the at the keynote. Um, I, I was uh, seemed very obvious, you know, that if you want to build new networks with new ideas without breaking stuff, that you build them in some kind of sandbox. And one of the things that was really interesting about Brazil is that it's the only place where I work where people are building community networks where they've actually specifically specified that they don't want to connect to the internet. Most people just want, you know, oh great, you're going to give us internet, brilliant, we can have Facebook. These people have actually said, that's the last thing we want. We want to build our own community network first, see how that works from grassroots up, and then maybe we'll federate. So it seems to me that that would be a really good idea. And the question is, is the EU, because yesterday we also heard that the new internet is about EU values, which I wonder what they are. Um, I think as part of that, tech will fix the human problem problem. Um, but is the EU in any way going to help me to fund projects that would help build community networks in Brazil that are specifically uh, against federating with the likes of Facebook? Yeah, uh, except it won't be uh, within the consortium because Brazil is not part of the countries we can work with, which is very problematic because Balbaxa is a Brazilian project and we have many uh, interesting contacts there. There is also a, a Radio Mondial Digital. Uh, that's, that's an alternate uh, uh, DRM acronym that you can use. Uh, di di digital uh, digital uh, Radio Mondial. It's, it's uh, a way to connect over short wave, uh, you know, send data over short wave, long distance, um, alternate to in internet uh, cables. So, yeah, have a look at this. Time is up, so I need to leave the, leave the floor. Uh, thank you. We are around today and uh, looking forward to meet uh, some of you.